Good evening, everyone. This is Alex, the People's Bard here. Um, it's been a long time since I posted, but I'm going to try and do something regularly here for a while where I uh, read some poems I've been um, reading. And uh, I'm also going to make a point to finding other folks' poems on the internet and uh, taking a stab at reading them myself. I have been trying to read poetry more as sort of a spiritual meditative practice. It's something I used to do a lot and um, I find it calming. And I also enjoy reading poems out loud. I find that I hear and see more in them when I read out loud. And I also have been told that it's nice to listen to me read. So I don't really know if that's true, but I'm going to give it a go. So the first poem I wanted to read was one I found the other night in this um, anthology of poems that had been in Poetry Magazine at some point. And uh, this is a William Matthews poem from October 91. I was unfamiliar with William Matthews, but uh, we'll talk about it a little bit after I read it. It is called Mingus at the Show Place. I was miserable, of course, for I was 17. And so I swung into action and wrote a poem. And it was miserable, for that was how I thought poetry worked. You digested experience and shat literature. It was 1960 at the show place, long since defunct on West 4th Street. And I sat at the bar Casting beer money from a thin reel of wands. The kid in the city, big ears like a puppy. And I knew Mingus was a genius. I knew two other things, but they were wrong as it happened. So I made him look at the poem. There's a lot of that going around, he said. And sweet baby Jesus, he was right. He laughed amiably. He didn't look as if he thought bad poems were dangerous the way some poets do. If they were baseball executives, they'd plot to destroy sandlots everywhere so that the game could be saved from children. Of course, later that night, he fired his pianist in mid-number and flurried him from the stand. We've suffered a diminuendo in personnel, he explained, and the band played on. As a young writer, I just appreciate, you know, he talks about sort of the the arrogance that it takes to write poetry in the first place and and the the way young people really can rawly get into it. And this Mingus character just sort of comments he's been reading a lot of passion and poetry like this. And I love the humility of the the poet. The, the speaker at least just to say yeah god a lot of people are doing it like this but really the the way he sort of chastises older experienced poets for being afraid of bad poetry it, it's pretty genius um, I love the metaphor of if they were baseball executives they'd plot to destroy sandlots everywhere so that the game could be saved from children as a child playing the game of writing poetry. I'm glad uh, the old grumpy poets can't stop me from doing it. So that was Mingus of the Show Place by William Matthews. The next poem I'm gonna read, um, so I'm in uh, recovery for alcohol use disorder and uh, a friend of mine gave me this book of poems by, um, I think it's, Cave, I'm not sure how you say the first name, Cave Akbar. And uh, Mr. Akbar is famous uh, for being a poet in recovery, and it's a subject in a lot of his poems. Um, but this book of his poem, Pilgrim Bell, I've been reading it, and this was a poem that I read the other night that I liked in particular. It's titled, I Wouldn't Even Know What to Do With a Third Chance. What's inside my body is more or less the same as what's inside yours. Here, 
the river girl clutching her toy whistle. Here, the black snake covered in scabs. Follow my neckline. The beginning will start beginning again. I swear on my head and eyes, there are moments in every day when if you asked me to leave, I would. Head and eyes. Heaven is all preposition, above, among, around, within. And if you must, you can live any place that's a place. A failure of courage is still a victory for safety. Bravery pitches its refugee tent at the base of my brain and slowly starves, chipping into darkness like a clay bird bouncing down a well. All night, I eat garlic cream, water my dead orchids. In what world does any of it seem credible? God's word is a melody and melody requires repetition. God's word is a melody I sang once, then forgot. Uh, there's a lot of language in this poem I like, but I really like the, the two lines. Bravery pitches its refugee tent at the base of my brain and slowly starves. Um, the courage I've taken to, to go on um, sometimes at the, you know, the depths of my mental health issues and abuse, uh, addiction issues. Um, it's felt sometimes like my bravery was going to start and that uh, I just wasn't going to have any left. Uh, anyway, I love this poem. And it's entitled, I Wouldn't Even Know What to Do With a Third Chance. And it's from Pilgrim Bell by Mr. Akbar. So the last thing I want to read tonight is a poem that I wrote. It's called, My Therapist Wanted Me to Give Up. And it was based on a story she told us that sometimes when she uh, does therapy work with children, she asks them, um, you know, to put their angries and sats in an old film canister. If you remember when we used to have replaceable film cameras, you could get these little rolls of film and they had little tops. And she will ask the children to put their angries and their sads in, in the canister. And then she puts the top on and she says, okay, I'm gonna take this with me and bury it in my yard. So it won't bother you. And if you wanna, we can talk about them. I'll dig it up and we can talk about them later. But now that you've given them to me, you don't have to be so angry or sad about them. I'll take them away for you. So I like this concept and I wrote this poem. My therapist wanted me to give up some small sickly resentment. She said she asks patients who are children to put their angries and sads into an old film canister pop on the gray plastic top, then seal it closed with duct tape. She buries these canisters in her front yard and tells the children that their problems are hers now. In thousands of years, I wonder if archeologists will discover her rotting single family home and yard full of tiny trauma capsules. Would they mark the discovery with a skull and crossbones, scaring accidental visitors away from a forbidden Chernobyl of old pains and curses best left undisturbed? Or would they think we treasured them, these vivid memories and fragments of ourselves? Would they see them in plastic that never degraded and wrapped in tape with care like a mummy of a beloved king or queen and think we worship them? Because we did, didn't we? Worship them, nurture them, let the small and sickly grow and breathe. All right, that's it for me tonight. I hope you all um, enjoy this and I'll be back again with more poetry tomorrow night.